A young man back in Costa Rica, Franklin Chang Diaz was inspired by the moon landings and decided that there was no doubt that he wanted to become an astronaut. Well, a kid with meager means living in Costa Rica that didn't speak any English could never ever become an astronaut, right? <laughs> well, we wouldn't be talking to him now if he hadn't. Dr. Chang Diaz has managed to earn a PhD from MIT, flown on seven, count them, seven space shuttle missions, and has managed to invent and develop a plasma rocket that can potentially shorten a seven-month mission to Mars to only 39 days. Now, I spoke with him here at his Ad Astra laboratory in Houston. So, you retired from the astronaut corps, and you've developed this new spacecraft, right, that can change travel. Tell us a little bit about it, man. Well, you know, um, in space, uh, things are really far away. And things are really far away. Mars is a long ways away. <laughs> and really, the rockets we have today are really not suitable for that sort of travel. Okay. And I always felt that uh, we needed to come up with something different, something much more powerful, much more capable, much faster. Sure. If it takes us, uh, you know, eight to ten months to get to Mars one way, that's yeah. too long. It's, it's too long for the astronauts to be cooked up in a, in a spacecraft for that long. Um, we need to go there fast. And because Mars is not gonna be the only place we go, we also want to go to Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune and we're gonna explore their moons. And you know, we, we, we really want to have access to the entire solar system. So we've been working on this rocket engine which we call Vasimir. It's, it's a plasma rocket. Wow. It uses the uh, stuff that the sun is made out of, the very hot, uh, gas, which we call plasma, okay. temperatures of millions of degrees. At those temperatures, the rockets are able to push a lot faster, a lot better, a lot more efficient. And that's what we're working on here. We've got one right here in the back. This is it behind it's, us. It's huh? uh, sitting uh, inside this vacuum chamber, and we, we fire it from time to time. Right. We're getting ready to take it up to the space station and put it up there and test it up there. Really? Yeah. So what kind of testing are they doing on the space station? I mean, can you break it down for us a little bit? Well, yes. I mean, the sort of, the sort of testing we have to do in these kinds of rockets, they need to be in a vacuum. Okay. Right now, we have this vacuum chamber. Right. And this is a big can, it's a big tin can. And, yeah. and we take all the air out, and we, we make a little space in there. Sure. And so we put the rocket and test it there. But when the rocket fires, it destroys this vacuum that we're worked so hard to make and so the little pumps that are trying to pump the air out are working really hard. Gotcha. So eventually the, the, the rocket completely obliterates the pumps and the pumps can't keep up. Oh. We have to test these rockets in space in the real environment where they are going to operate and that's why the space station is so important to us. I see. It is the only place where these kinds of rockets can be tested. So tell me, what is the difference between what we have now compared to what you are building for tomorrow? What we have now are um, chemical rockets, rockets that use uh, chemical uh, uh, fuels okay. that combine and they make a lot of heat. But the problem is that we have to carry a lot of fuel with us. Mm -hmm. You see the size of the rockets that went to the moon and to take the astronauts to the moon, gigantic rockets, and most of that was fuel. What actually got to the moon was a little tiny capsule and what got back to Earth was even smaller. <laughs> so, so, so these rockets are, are real gas guzzlers right. and they don't get very far. So what we need to do is, is uh, develop rockets that are more frugal, use much less fuel. Sure. And that's what this rocket does. So typically uh, a chemical uh, conventional rocket will take about maybe seven to eight months to right. deliver a crew to Mars. Uh, the plasma rocket can do it in just over a month, wow. maybe maybe a little bit, maybe exactly a month. Really? So, um, but of course you need a lot of power. We are very excited here. Uh, we've been working on this technology for uh, now almost 30 years. And we feel that we are now at a very important moment because the conditions uh, of interest now are for completely new technologies. People are now thinking, let's really dream again. Let's really go and open up what NASA uh, used to do, which is to dream and to really move uh, the frontier um, far out. And we are in a very good position now to participate in that dream. We feel that, uh, sure enough, uh, the development of advanced plasma rockets and very high power uh, capabilities in space 
will really open up the entire solar system for human exploration, something that we really believe here in our, in our team, in our operation. And we hope that uh, that first uh, human being that will be uh, walking on Mars uh, is a member of our team. Maybe Hopefully. you. Well, if not me, somebody else. Listen, thank you for your time. Gracias para todo. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto, sí, primo.